Check one, two. Check. Check, check, Hi, everybody. Check. Welcome back to the program. We're just testing our mics. A couple of radio professionals. One guy that's still on radio. One guy that will never do it again. Uh, please welcome back to the program, Lock Lacrosse, 957 yeah. Cruise FM in Edmonton. He's the host of the locker room. Are you What's that, that for? A, I might. We'll see. See how it goes. See how it goes. Still in radio. Zero interest to be in radio. But anyway, who knows? We'll see what happens. See what happens with the next couple of months, Spring. You know what? You and I never talked about the uh, about the Bell thing. I was away. Yeah. You did yeah, everything wanted, with Charles. What was Charles' thoughts on it? Highway robbery. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're referring, of course, to Bell Media, Canada's biggest broadcaster, owner of Canada's was. biggest telco network, was yeah, selling half of their shitty radio station division and putting 4,800 people out of work. Was that the, the total tally? I think 4,800 people. So like, like 7% of their, their workforce. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is severe. I yeah. know a couple of casualties from the business. It's a, it's a it's a tough one. Yeah. And then the comments from the CEO that that radio's losing. Um, oh no, a viable. What? Yeah, that's what he said. Mirko Bibich. He's like, eh, this business isn't viable anymore. Uh, radio is not a viable business. And then they tried to walk it back for two days after that as part of his press release, which was really interesting when you think about it. And I just drilled down on that for a second. The dude owns the biggest, and he's the CEO of the biggest broadcast company in Canada, one of the biggest employers in Canada. Puts out a note. He's like, we're firing 5,000 people. At least they don't do it during Bell Talks. No, they wait two week weeks anymore. after till the healing has happened. <laughs> That's what they do. They're like, okay, let's let people heal mentally, and then we'll fire them all. <clears throat> let's get them to help us with this this one last Bell Let's Talk scam, and then we'll fire them all. Make them feel real good about changing their lives. So anyway, so they fire forty eight hundred people. Uh, unload basically sell forty five to fifty radio Four, stations. Forty five radio stations. They. They yeah. uh, they parted ways with yeah and but here's the thing about that that's actually probably good news because they'll get into the hands of companies that value Excellent the news. industry yeah everybody's upset yeah. no 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 you you they sold that to like five or six different radio divisions that actually battle yeah. it out and care about that little bit of revenue that you can still make in that space so everybody's going to get more competitive people get better jobs in smaller markets nice great good thanks awesome but here's the thing Marco Bibich the CEO of Bell Media who paid $40 million last year, 40 million just for going, yeah, this is not a viable business kept half of their radio stations. So if it's not a viable business, why are you only selling half of them? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you sell all of them? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would well, like if someone came to me and they're like, why did you get rid of half of your portfolio? And I said, bad business, business doesn't work. And then they said to me, but you kept the other half in the same industry. I would say, well, I'm lying. Well, then you would have to also look your employees in the eye, right? Here's what has happened in our industry in the last 20, 25 years. Uh, yeah. it, I'm, I'm trying to do the math in my head quickly here before I get into a uh, get into it. You and math are not pals either, no, so that's tough. It's a struggle. It's yeah. a struggle. I need paper. I need a calculator. Mm -hmm. I need one of those, uh, like... Calculator watches. On. Remember the calculator oh, watches the, the used balls to have when we grew wires. Up? Yeah. Okay. So, what ended up happening with our industry is it became a um, it became an asset for big business in this country, and big business in this country is telecommunications companies. So, they ended up going out of the way that the the big companies, the, the the Bells and the Rogers, they went out of the way to buy up everything in mm -hmm. the broadcast world, right? So they. They all get all these as, as many as they can based on the the, the restrictions that are set, uh, you know, set by the CRTC. And then they thought, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna make more money out of this. We're gonna make money from this industry. And here's how we're gonna do it. We are gonna do something that should have been done years ago. And it 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 was a template that they were following from the states and other major corporations that were buying up broadcast entities yeah. and they marginalized consolidated voice tracked got as much as they could for as with, with with the resources as as possible and then something happened the business 
just kept declining because the people that were left didn't weren't have very the resources. Good at the job. Well, you don't listen. Here's the thing: what you're trying. You to always say. equate this to your departure from the industry, and and uh, is that not when it happened? I it, it is, but. <laughs> You were the, a the very good not start nine years ago when I let the best in Canada. Uh, when I left, when I left broadcasting, yeah, listen, let's call a spade a spade. You called me humble yesterday. Let me just drop it like it's hot for you. I was and still am the best in this country at that job. Okay? <laughs> and uh, you don't have a 40 share. Uh, you don't, you're not number one for 10 you're, years. You're, you're okay a at. solid broadcaster. Solid, yeah. No, the best in this country. Okay. Still am. So, okay. but, but hold on. Hang on, but, hang on. So, but they had to pay for that. Guys like Charles, they had to pay for that. Other people, they got to pay for that. So they decided in their infinite wisdom, to your point, uh, we we can't afford to pay that kind of money to really good broadcasters. Let's it wasn't that. They just oh, wanted to squeeze more out of. Correct. They didn't want to pay anybody over a million bucks a year. And then that went down to 750 then five, then 350 and then 250 And no one's going to do a, a radio job in Toronto for $100,000 unless you're the, the Edge Morning Show, of course. Then you'll do it. You'll do it for fucking 80. But here's the rub. This is the thing is they squeezed all the profit out of it, to your point. Yeah. And then they're like, all we have is 25 bucks left. Can we get a moron to do a radio show for 25 bucks? And some guy's like, yes, you can. It's called voice tracking. And they're like, okay, great. So you just record the breaks into a commercial, and there's no live person, no. And you don't have to have someone in the studio, no. And you don't have to give people dental, health care, any of that stuff, no. You don't have to top up their RSPs, no, nothing. None of that stuff. They're not a liability on a ledger. And then there's like, why does it suck so much? <laughs> Okay. Why, well, why, you, why yeah, you're kind of finishing my my point. So yes, I am. You're kind of finishing my point. Like I said, I'm the best broadcaster in this country. That's why I had to do that. Well, that wasn't going to be the angle I went. It wasn't going to be about Dean leaving and the whole industry falling on its ear. I had to. No, so they created this template for what they thought would be success, and of course, yeah. it didn't work. The marginalization. Um, you 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 took the life of this industry away from from what what made it great what made it interesting is now gone and then of course you can't make any money at it right so then Not with shit hosts but, but then but then also what ends up happening is it becomes the template for all other companies yeah because one company did it so the other companies are like they saved like 1.2 million last year below but what ends up happening is everybody gets into the same position they keep doing what and it doesn't make any sense like they keep doing it and they keep doing it and keep doing it. And then they yeah. keep going, hold on, we're, we're still losing money. There Good must enough. be a reason why we're losing money. And no, they're and not no one's willing to money, say dude. out loud that you're losing money because the template doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Right? You can't make somebody do 15 cities from his closet at home with one of these and make it compelling. Yeah. Right? There's an element to this business live that works yeah. man if somebody gave me a stick and said go do what you want to do i would By literally way, for everybody out there listening a stick is a transmitter what lachlan is saying when he says someone gave me a stick he's asking for a radio station that transmits a signal that's what he's saying i would go i would open up my radio station i would have four hour slots i'd put teams on every four hours i'd be live 24 hours a day i would schedule the music for the jocks but i would give them autonomy for their music that they played on their show. Meaning if you came to me and said, I would like to play, I don't know, Sam Cook today, I'd be like, go play Sam Cook. Right into Primus and then a Metallica tune and maybe Jolene by Dolly Parton. Yeah. Because really, we've we, literally we have we 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 need to abandon the idea of formats. We need to abandon the idea of uh, like we need to get I'm rid sure, of a lot dude. of these guys are all so smart. They've cratered an entire industry in North America. Well, well in Canada, I'm part sure of the reason get around to that. Listen, on top of that template, what ends up happening is the money's shrinking. So yeah. what 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 happens when the money shrinks? People gravitate to what they're comfortable with. So they go to these things, these ideas of what they think will work. Okay. Yeah. Like I know what we're gonna do. Our target audience is this age group. So we're going to play everything from their high school years. And that's all we're going to play. We're going to focus target on audience five. are cowboys. We're just going to play Do cowboy you know, Western country music. Yeah. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we totally. have, we have, we, we lost the script. We lost the script and everyone's panicking because 
The template was consolidate, marginalize, shrink the workforce, mm -hmm. get as much as you possibly can out of the people that are still left in it. Um, and and that's not it, it, that's not working. Oh my, oh my God, what's going on? And so we're all relying on these. And and again, I'm not blaming big business. I'm not uh, I'm not mad at the industry. We're we're dealing with something right now, and hopefully we can come out the other side of it. I I blame money when. When money becomes your sole focus, which it is for Bell, dividends for shareholders, absolutely. the lifeblood of that company, yes. And that that's just the way the world works, right? It is, Companies. It is and it isn't. It is and it isn't because how you get there matters when you're telling your story, right? Boom. So with a company like Bell, they fire 5,000 people. We haven't talked about it yet. It happened just last week, so it's nice that we brought it up. Um, they fire 5,000 people. They tell 5,000 people, shit out of luck. We're trying to do our best job for this company. And they, they leave out some details. So the details of that, which tell a better story, is Bell was given $40 million the week before they fired 5,000 people. And we're counting on that $40 million and the justification for that $40 million from the government of Canada, right? Which every single party, with the exception that. of the government of Canada, decided to vote for to give them, including Pierre Polyev, the NDP, the bloc. So they voted for this massive tax write-off, $40 million infusion into operating costs for Bell, Okay. What was it for? The way the bell justified it in their ask, it was to pay salaries of people that they couldn't afford to pay in areas of news and journalism that were suffering due to Google ads and meta ads and all the other shit that they didn't catch on to soon enough because they were they were acting like ostriches with their fucking heads in the sand when it came to tech, the Internet and on demand comment for 10 years. They did that for 10 years. They just ignored it. You know, you ever hear the story of the Japanese guy that came out of the woods 40 years after, like, the fucking war was over? And then he was like, dude, the war's been over for, like, 40 years. He's like, oh, my God, are you serious? Like, that's exact. That's the radio industry now. They tried to just pretend like the, the Internet wasn't a thing for a long time. Bell's not a, uh, not, not I don't, excused. Uh, no, no, they no, no, you're wrong. No, you're, no, I'm not. You're, no, I'm not, you're wrong. I'm not. You're wrong. I can tell you this because I've had conversations with people in those industries recently where they're like, we're just going to keep uh, telling people that they need to listen to the radio as opposed to getting on to band content. That's the only tool we have in our toolkit. I've had there, that conversation. There isn't. No, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying and I, I get it. But there has been um, and maybe maybe radio is slow when you look at certain aspects of technology. But they in ignore general, it. In dude. Gen they, they ignore don't. it. No, dude. no. In general, Stop in general. It. Stop. If they, if, they didn't, if they hadn't, hang on. Let me let me just prove my point to you right now. But you're using Pod an example of podcasting. All you, and what I'm going to use it again. I'm going to use it again. Podcasters. That's not okay. everything digital. No, it's not everything digital, but it's the best example I can give you that I'm trying to explain to you of how they thumb their nose at the digital world. I have, on average, two to three conversations a week, maybe less. One to three with people that run radio stations about this very thing. How do we bridge the gap between podcasts and radio? How do we get podcasts on the radio? Boom. And always the conversation they have with these guys ends with it's a little risky. And you're like, what are you fucking talking about? You take a podcast you okay, chop it's it not technology, segments. then it's content. They'll hold it. And they're like, yeah, it's, but we don't. But the last conversation I had with someone was like, content. we don't want to give credit. Radio doesn't want to give credit to digital because they want people listening to the radio. That's how fucking backwards they are still. That's how like it was like the whole competition thing. Don't tell somebody when they're listening to the radio, they should go watch something on the television. Yes. Yes. It's and the same thing is don't tell someone that's on the where radio. They that's should go where here you're to get, right. Oh, yes. That's where you're right. Adapting technology of course. is not is not the is not radio's issue. It's it's this bridge between what it is that we're doing right now and then the terrestrial world. Yeah. And and they and for some reason I I you and I've talked about this and and how simple it would be to jump into that into that world with what we do. It's very convertible, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, Dean, is they're still looking at this as something different than what we do on the radio every day. I right? know. And they've separated it. And that's that's the biggest issue. It's not a technology issue. It's a it's a content issue. 
Yeah, it's they, an us they, versus them. They go, issue, hey, so. you do that cool little thing called the podcast. What, what is that? <laughs> well, it's just kind of eating your face right now. Actually, that's what we tell them. It's, we're eating your face. I had a conversation with somebody who was asking me about the the radio versus the podcast thing, and and uh, and he brought up what's this whole thing? I hear Dean talking about it all the time. Digital first. And I'm like, ah, he just he's just suggesting you take a different approach. Rather than because what I do on the locker room, what Grant, Jimmy, and I do in the locker room is we go in every morning, we try to put together the best show we possibly can. And then at the end of the day, we take what we did, we take all the audio, we condense it into a podcast, and we put it out into the world. So if you wanted to listen to the locker room, you could do so in podcast form. Okay. Um, and I still think the show is better if you tune in live. That's my very humble opinion. But we provide a podcast option for the audience. And that has generated a larger audience because we have more people listening to us because we're giving them more avenues to listen to the locker room. And then I wait, said to wait the guys, a second, you're increasing your distribution channel so you have more people listening to you? Ex I, listen, so weird. I should start keeping a tally of how many times you're trying to be a dick here. Okay, but hold on. No, That's I'm not being four. a dick to you. No, I know, I know. I just, all I enjoy in it. Who are I, like, I do enjoy work. it. But I, I said to the guy, I said to the individual, I said, you take what Dean and I are doing. If we're just going to use this as an example, you take the the Dean Blundell podcast or the Dean Blundell show with Lachlan Cross podcast. Okay, mm -hmm. we go live a couple of times a week. Sometimes three, sometimes four, sometimes two, two days a week. Let's say we make that consistent. And we actually, God forbid, Dean, we do it at exactly the same time every day. Okay. <laughs> now you put that out into the world. People can engage with it. Yeah. Then it actually gets released as a podcast. Guess what else you can do with it? Take that content, cut it up and put it on one of your radio stations or five or 10. Between Here's the other whatever you songs you like. Like you can put it on between a song, you can put a song in the middle of it. You you can do whatever, and they're like, "That's never gonna work for us, dude." I had and a the guy with goes, someone last week, and he was like, "Not interested." I'm like, "All right." The guy goes, "I never thought of it that way." <laughs> and then he, and the reason being is because the radio people are caught into into this idea of what radio is. You go into that room and you do your thing. Yeah. Right. This is something separate. This was something different. This came along. Ah, Mark Marin and Joe Rogan and Adam Carolla started that. Like that's that's different. That's no, no, it's 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 actually not, and it's quite transferable if you ask me. If you do a radio friendly version of a podcast, which isn't difficult, that's the thing. Right? We could is easily it? take any day that you and I sit <clears throat> and 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 put this madness out. We can yep. easily cut this up and put this out into the world. Uh, well, you need a partner to do that. Someone that wants to dance with you. You don't see that very often because they're busy telling everybody that uh, there's the house is not on well, fire. Like at Bell, the house is not on fire. But you sold 45 radio stations and fired 4,800 people. <laughs> ah, it's all good here still. It's not a viable business still, but you kept half of them. Well, no, we just uh, uh, we don't want to talk about it anymore. I mean, that that is radio in a nutshell. And, yes. Oh, by and, the way, and unfortunately, the way that, when you're actually firing people and destroying an industry on the way to that, you take 40 million that was meant to pay those people and you give it to all the richy rich investors as a mm. dividend because that is what I did not know did about that. I didn't know that about yeah. that part of it. Yeah. 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 But it, it is sad. It's sad what's happening to the business and it's being done and, and you can put horns on one company or another, but it's being done in the in the name of 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 marginalization, consolidation, trying to make a buck for the shareholders. And they're yeah. not uh, I think what 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 was lost along the way was care for the people that create the content and and then dean's phone rings and and his podcast network crier media continues to grow <laughs> yeah, that's the thing uh, dude one of the great examples of this and and listen i've i've reached out to the gentleman uh you may have heard of him stuntman stew yep this is a morning show in ottawa he's a legendary morning show guy in ottawa uh two-time cancer survivor um recently beat cancer recently beat a heart attack or at least beat one back uh he was like go as part of that call and i'm like hey dude you want to come on he goes ah, 
got a little resentment going on right now. I don't think it's a great idea. And I'm like, ah, it's a shame, but I totally, totally get it. And I remember being where he was years ago. He's got 18 years in at one station in Ottawa. Finally gets unceremonially, unceremoniously dumped by Bell. Just after beating cancer, after beating a heart attack, big smile on his face. He's Mr. Ottawa, Mr. Community. He's on every board. He's one of those guys, right? Like local radio dudes that like always gets involved in the community stuff, Lions Club, helping raise money for kids. And he's a great example. Caitlin Green is a great example. She works with Jan Arden in the podcast world. He's a great example of someone that had something to go to or didn't, and then Caitlin Green having something to go to that didn't. So that my advice to everybody is this. If you're in that mix, if you're on the radio right now and you're working for specifically Bell, because they do this every year. Every radio station does. Some do it a little quieter than others. Some blame the government. Some blame themselves. They all blame the government. No one blames themselves for bad operating. But that's what it is, bad operating. Get out. Get out, get out, go find a different gig, go do it yourself, do a podcast, do your it's own tough, content. Man. It's, yeah. it's tough to take that risk and to, you know, and to um, bet on yourself. It, it is, it really is, right? Well, I mean, you know, you're not, not in that boat just because of the fact that you're, you've been doing what you're doing at the highest level for 30 years. You're incredibly successful at the gig that you're in. Um, doesn't matter how secure you are. Doesn't matter how much money you make. No. Doesn't matter about your ratings like there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's a dark light. Right. And there's a lot of people out there that are going, Hmm, I wonder what I do now. Like I had a conversation with a guy that didn't get pumped from bell. He does a morning show. And he's like, what do I do? I go, dude, moonlight the shit out of the next three to five years of your life by creating Mm -hmm. something that you can go to when you're done this. That's what you have to do. And you know what he said to me? He goes, my contract says I am not allowed to. I'm like, do it anyway. Do it anyway, and I encourage well, and everybody to do the same thing. I I was lucky. I I I worked for a company that um, um uh, that saw very little value in me doing a podcast with Dean Blundell, <laughs> and said, "Sure." Now they're like, "Maybe we shouldn't." Have. But here's the thing, and this is what a lot of people at Bell don't realize. But I jumped into this world with you. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Uh, because what you just said, because I, I wanted to exercise a muscle in this industry that I, that I was not using and that, uh, and I wanted to learn about the podcast side of things. Mm-hmm. And for me, the reason why I continue to come back is, uh, your charming face. Thanks, um, no, I will say this. I actually really enjoy doing this with you. Um, I, and I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to blow smoke up your ass. And I, I, from the day that we did this, the first one, I was like, I've got some chemistry with Dean. We could make this something. And, and I think it is something. And then the other reason why I have to exercise a very different muscle in the broadcast world, in the uh, arena, like if this is a workout gym, I'm using different muscles on this thing than I do on my radio show. And so I feel like I've become a better broadcaster because of it right Mm -hmm. on the locker room i'm the driver like i'm steering the ship on this you're steering the ship so sometimes i take it over but that's just my nature (laughs) um i i feel like i've become better at what i do as a whole in this industry because of what i've done with you well you're doing more content right like that's the thing is a lot of people don't they're like i'm only going to do the content that i get paid for conversations I have with people that are going from that industry to this industry is, Hey, reps, you need reps. You got to do this. When we're doing more content, you are better at it. And podcasting is very different. And radio is going to look a lot like podcasting in the next three to five years. Just a matter of when someone's going to jump in and decide to go, Hey, let's flip the switch. Let's have radio people that are partners. They're going to deliver their content from a content basis. We're going to aggregate that. We're going to put that here. Lots of tips and tools and tricks that I've talked to people about. And I've done some consulting with people on this in the past, and it does work. The problem that they have is that they, they're unwilling to cede control of any content because they're afraid of what's going to happen. Like, you know, one of the things that, that someone sent me the other day, they're like, why is radio so bad in Calgary? And I'm like, well, it's fucking Calgary. And she, she, this person was like, yeah, but like they're talking about the McRib and they've been talking about the McRib for hey, two listen. hours. No, but you talk about it. Be careful. Be careful because the McRib. Saved my life. No good. I know. It's you 10 love years. It. 
Dude, there's a McRib advertisement at McDonald's around the, the corner for me. I'm like, I'm fucking probably going to get the McRib tonight. I I'm always not talk I'm about always it. For like very, I'm always very careful about making fun of what other radio people do. Yeah. Because I'll the stuff probably do. do it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of which, can I just uh, take a pause for a second? You've got an I hate vegan shirt on. Um, I don't specifically hate vegans. I do not trust vegans, by the way. Maybe I, I should have made I've never hate met is someone. a strong word. Yeah, hate's a tough word. Yeah. But you is your shirts, I hate vegans. You can buy that shirt if you do hate vegans at the locker room merch store. But I I don't get them. I don't understand them and I don't trust them. And I was thinking about There's it this morning. Be because of that. Well, I know I love your thoughts on it, yeah. but I have yet to meet a vegan because every vegan I meet will let you know that they're vegan before they even tell you what their last name is. Like it's like, hey, just uh, want to let you know. Hey, hey. Yeah, what's your what's up? I uh, just want to let you know. Hi, uh, I'm vegan. Great. Do you have a name, vegan? Sean. Invariably, vegans are named Sean. Female vegans are named Karen or Cody. Sean or Karen. Cody. Yeah, some kind of nondescript unisex name. What's your name, Hunter? Hunter's a vegan for sure. And you always get the same thing from every vegan. You look at them and you would think. Can vegans I get are... you a burger? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I rub one on your face? That's for me. Hey, can I throw popcorn chicken down that guy's butt crack in his pants? Oh, by the way, you got meat in your pants. Ooh. Um, but I look at vegans and I think the same thing because I, I don't know any any thin vegans. <laughs> Maybe it's because the friends that I have are no, all No, I know, I know some thin vegans. I don't know one thin vegan. And I've got one friend. He will rename nameless. His name's Colin. <laughs> Ooh. Who went Colin? vegan? A Am I thinking ago. of the Colin you're thinking of? No, different Colin. No, 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 mm. not 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 Cantor Colin, not sponsor of the show. He had Colin. to stop eating meat because his joints were swelling up. And we went for lunch this a couple years ago. We went for lunch, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" He's eating a salad, and I made fun of him for like an hour. And he goes, "I'm actually allergic to meat right now." And I'm like, I'm still going to make fun okay. of you. That's what they say. That's what they all say. I'm just allergic. No, no, you're scared of the beef, dude. So my buddy Colin, who lives here, I see him like two weeks ago. We go for pints, bunch of us. And he's gained like, <laughs> it's got to be 70 pounds since the last time I saw him. Oh, no. And so he walks in not and he's huge and he's bigger. And my buddy Craig hits my arm and he goes, Colin's really put on a few pounds, huh? He comes and walks in. I'm like, Colin, great to see you. You know, the first thing he says to me was, thanks, buddy. I haven't felt this good in years. I'm vegan now. And I'm like, mm, we're going to deconstruct that at the table. I said, no. and he's like, all right, whatever that means. So we all order a pint. I get my coffee. No, I had a point zero. And we're sitting down. And I said, so, Colin, I just got to ask you a question before we start. And these are all like lifelong friends. I got to ask you a question. How is it possible for you to turn vegan and gain 70 to 80 pounds? Not a I word. Know his, I know what his answer was. No, you know what he you know what he said? He goes like this. Okay. All right. Because he knows me. And I go, no, no, no. Not okay. Not all right. You showed up. Instead of saying, hi, great to see everybody. You informed us all you were vegans. Now, you're about eight pan sizes bigger than the last time I saw you. How long have you been vegan for? He goes, I don't want to talk about it. I go, how long? He goes, a year. I go, you gained 80 pounds in a year? He goes, no, I've gained 80 pounds in two years. I gained 40, went vegan, gained another 40, because all I do is eat chips and shit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. So you feel better, do you? And he fucking fessed up. He's like, I feel like shit. Goes, I yeah. got to start eating meat again. Yeah. So anyway, he's now no longer a vegan. And we did that to him. And he feels great. So he's lost like 10 pounds. All he does is eat meat now. It's like, I just eat meat. Uh, like, yeah, it's called the Atkins diet, dude. Just fucking eat meat. The carnivore diet. going to be great. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. very healthy either. I think you got to, yeah, I think you got to have a balanced Balanced diet, balanced nutrition. Yeah. I, the, the vegan thing for me is interesting because I, I went to, um, I went to radio school with the, with a kid and he was vegan before I like, cause I remember him saying he was vegan. I'm like vegetarian. And he goes, I'm, I'm vegan. I'm vegan. There's a difference. And I never really bothered to, to, to look into it. But the one thing I remember about him was he was very unhealthy and um, also was wild mood swings. And he, he is a good guy, but I, I remember running into him 
like 10 years after we had finished school and he had a, he had a, like a mental breakdown in front of me in a coffee shop and stormed away. And I haven't heard from him since No, hold on. I know I shouldn't be laughing. I shouldn't be laughing, but I know what you're doing here. You're pil- telling the story. This is one example. He was a vegan. Yes. I know. And, and he had maintained his vegan diet and he did not look healthy. He looked really unhealthy and he was gray um, and I don't listen. Is he dead? I think people he make, he's not dead. No. I, I don't know where he is. I, I, like I said, I lost touch with him. People make is decisions in their lives for a variety of reasons. And he obviously made the decision he made to do what he did for his own personal reasons. So you can't begrudge people that. Unfortunately, our chemical makeup is such that we need proteins and it's difficult I think with a vegan diet, not impossible, but I think it's difficult to get the nutrients that you need to function properly. And I'm talking just day to day, like being healthy, your brain working properly. I I honestly believe that. And I am not a medical expert, even though I do a daily segment called Dr. Locke on the locker room, uh, which we just sort of make fun of medical stuff. But I truly believe that. And anybody that I have ever met that has been a vegan for any length of time, to me, looks Stinks. unhealthy. Now, listen, if you're a millionaire. They smell weird, too. Got, you notice they that? They smell weird. They vegan got a funk smell on them. weird. Yeah, they got a hum. They it's got weird. a hum. You walk by them, you're like, you smell like outhouse. That's what a vegan it's smells not outhouse, like. It's, it's like old outhouse, like Banff it's National like, Park outhouse. It's like cheese and some kind of a vegetable yeah, got left know. in the sun too long. And then you Fermented put it under anything. your armpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, put it under your armpit for good measure. To keep it warm <laughs> so that it uh. pulse, pulse it. So that's my issue with vegans. Also, they have a, and again. They wear a lot of wool. I don't like no, that either. No, no, no. It's not about what they wear. Oh. For me, okay. it's it's that they need to announce it. And they also need to make you feel bad about how you live your life because totally. they've I've made never this met a vegan choice. Other than my buddy Colin, who we turned in like 20 minutes in a beer. Um, we literally, we're like, dude, that's stupid. You got to stop. He goes, yeah, you're right. Other than that, I've never met a vegan who doesn't A, lead with the fact that they're vegan or B, chastise you for not being as weird as that's they are. My, that's my yeah. problem with it. Totally. It's like religion. If you choose to be have faith and believe in something, fine. Yeah. That's your decision. Yeah. Don't try to push it on me. For whatever then, reason, vegans seem to think they need to convert everybody in the room. Yeah. That's the essence of the shirt. I hate that's vegans. That, you hate those that, vegans. I also will not deal with somebody coming to my door to tell me how to live my life. You right? get that? Do people come and walk around in Edmonton and tell you how to live your life by going to your door? Usually once. Oh, the religious people. You're talking about like Jehovah's Witnesses. They won't come back. Yeah. Again, I and stuff. I believe in faith. I believe you should have whatever you need to, whatever you need to live your life. That's yeah. great. You believe in stoicism. Okay. You never Version. push that on me. Never. Okay. Well, it's not a that's, religion. It's just like, fuck for me. It's not for you. You want to learn about it. I'll teach it, but fuck, we're not going to teach you if you don't want to learn about so, it. Yeah. And I think it's stupid. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't, I usually just like cloud over when you start talking about it. Well, uh, speaking of clouding over, I did that today. Did you see, so first of all, let's get ready for maybe one of the most exciting elections in Canada's history. Okay. Let's just, I I want to put that on the table. No, 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 I'm all in. I'm all, no, I'm not. I'm not going to pump the brakes. I'm going to enjoy this. We got Justin Trudeau in Edmonton. We got Pierre Polyev, who knows where the internet um, competing. It's like a personality off now. And we've seen it. He was in Edmonton yesterday. He got mobbed in Edmonton again yesterday. He's making a housing announcement. But there are two announcements that are going on, which has brought this thing to a head. Now, listen, yesterday we talked about distractions. These are distractions, but there's some fun stuff in these distractions. Two distractions that the political machinery wants everybody to get involved in now. One of them is uh, stopping children from watching pornography in Canada. The other one's trans bathrooms, of all things, like we haven't litigated this thing. You got 0.000012% of is the population the bath- that has a bathroom. Is PP on the bathroom thing? 100%. Or is he just 100%. on biological yesterday, males so did, not competing in female no, sports? No, two things. He, yeah, it's safe space. So yesterday, he just okay. stupid impromptu press conference. I haven't been paying it. I, no, me neither. But I've been I paid attention to it this morning. You should. It's way better for you. 
uh, paid attention to this morning. So, but but they have two little like th- th- these are two really different distractions, right? The trans thing is nothing but a distraction for the Abrahamic faith crew, all the Christians and the Muslims who are like. Our kids are never going to be gay. Chances are one of them might. So relax. They're probably going to love the pipe later in life. Uh, <laughs> you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna hate it because in your Bible it says, uh, "Oh, it's bad" and stuff. But no, no, trust me. There are lots of you out there that want your kids to not be gay. That will have gay kids, and God bless them all. I hope they gay it up. I hope they're gayer than gay. I, I just want everybody to be happy. comfortable with who they are. Yeah. yeah. So there's that part of it. So he goes in on trans bathrooms doesn't want women in trans bathrooms or men in trans bathrooms he thinks if there are two genders say what you like i'm not going to get into the gender conversation here at all but for such a small population to make this a real kitchen table issue is so fucking ridiculous it's just a distraction so whatever they're going at it uh, him and jt jt and pp going at it yesterday one guy's going to be the next prime minister who knows who's going to be but the one that made me laugh the hardest yesterday this online harms thing here in Canada, the liberal party, which win almost every election and the conservative party are head to head on one issue, online harms. Now, let me explain that on one side, you've got the liberal party who I wouldn't trust with my fucking wallet or my browser, to be honest with you, to make any decisions in my digital interest. On the other side, you got a bunch of religious people who are scared of nudity. Okay, and want to do nothing more than surveil you and surveil what you watch and capture as much data as they can on you so that they can send you stuff. They want to invade your privacy. Don't believe a word Pierre Polyev says about gatekeepers. He is the king of gatekeepers. And I'll tell you why it happened today. Oh, they totally they totally both want to. Oh, but trying to dude, this is internet. every political party wants to get as much personal information for you as you can. That's what is hiding in these online harms bills. So just be careful of that. I just want to put that out there. But they're going about it different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah. how the conservatives That's, want to do it. They're both, they both want they both want that that 100%. revenue from the data. Yeah. They want the yes. revenue from the data. They want the data. They want yeah. to kettle you. They want to get your privacy information. They want to remove. They want your driver's license number, social insurance number. They want your email addresses. They want your bank accounts. They want as much data on you as possible. Well, that is possible behind Pierre Polyev's new digital online bill, which he's floating. And here's the catch. His solution to preventing religious freakos from watching pornography or kids under the age of 18. This is the excuse. It's not the excuse. He wants to surveil you and he wants your information. It's hiding behind this idea that he's going to force under a conservative government, dude, force you and me and every one of the 40 million people in this country that like to surf the web anonymously because it's our right to give him a photo of the front and the back of your driver's license before you log on. That'll be that'll be a rule. He said that today and yesterday. Do I have to do it every time I pound off? Because that's (laughs) going to be very time consuming. (laughs) Just once. Just once. Oh, okay. Because they want to make sure that no people under the age of 18 are watching pornography, mature videos, bukkake videos, Threesome videos. Thanks to this podcast, I now know what book orgy, is. <laughs> orgy videos. I thought it was something you got at Starbucks. Stepmom videos. You know, stuff like that. They're like, we're going to force everybody to give us their driver's license so we can go through 40 million driver's license, capture all their private data, and we can assign an IP to people behind those driver's licenses that are of age and we can capture all their information so we could follow everything they do online. So that is a legitimate bill that he has floated. That is a legitimate thing that he wants you, to do. Are you I sure? Not, I'm 100% sure. Okay. Trudeau's answer to the online harms bill. So he's really, he's coming for porn. That's what Pierre Polyev's doing. And if I know a couple of things about Pierre Polyev, and I do happen to know a couple of things about him, he loves himself a little bit of porno. But he's of age, so he can watch as much porno as he wants. We were talking about what kind of porn. Keep going, but I think we should also jump into what kind of porn he might watch. Oh, I I know what kind of porn I think he watches. It's not the kind of porn you and I watch to get excited. I'll tell you that. We, I think it's like kind of stuff when it flashes on your screen. You're like, what? What was that? 
No, I think it's like uh, dominatrix type stuff. Like, you think so? Because he's yeah, like such a yeah, control yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he, I think he wants you know someone in high heels to step on his nutsack and stuff like that. While he's in a ball gag and a mask, yeah. maybe on a torture rack, getting cat yes, nine tail. Yes, yeah, he, he probably wants, likes that. He wants a girl standing above him, yeah. holding the the collar with a full leash. bladder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's licking the kitchen floor. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my thoughts on. Right. And on then people. then he then he's forced like the gimp to go down and do a load of laundry. That's also part of the thing. It's like I love it. Love being ordered yeah. around. You're right. I think I don't right. know why, but I just he has that look. Yeah. Of a dude right. that likes to be beat up a little bit before he gets his stuff off. I get it. I don't disagree. I don't or think we should Justin talk Trudeau. about what Justin watches. Well, I think I know what he's into, and I'm not going to get into it here. But I will say this. Justin Trudeau and the liberal idea of an online harms bill sucks. Is it different? Very different. Okay. They would penalize. I don't know how they're going to manage this. They'd penalize the hosts of content for serving content to children under the age of 18 that was not allowed. So they would identify porn sites and say, hey, if we find out that and you've made this accessible to anybody under this certain age, we're going to penalize you financially as a government. And if you're in Canada, we're going to come after you and there will be criminal charges. Which is yeah, the stupid. liberals like the money angle. I fuck, it's stupid. And then the other solution is, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to think about it, uh, online harms bill. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. I think it was, yeah, I think that's it. It's like you, you force the, oh, software, software. So he wants Canada to invest, which by the way, if you have an internet provider, you can age gate the internet on your VPN? app. Yeah, no, on your app. Like I've got Bell, unfortunately. I'm trying to get rid of it. I'd like to go with tech savvy. But I've got Bell and it's like, oh, do you want to parental controls on or off? I'm like, fuck, I got nobody under here under the age of 18. They're all adults that I live with, all adult dudes, my sons. And I'm like, no, nah, take it off because they're going to fucking find it anyway, dude. That's the well, other that's thing. that was the point that we were making this morning. I don't know why everybody they're a distraction. What I, well, it is a distraction, but I also think that when you get public servants and you you get you get somebody that's wired like that that goes, I I'm, I'm going to run for office. I'm going to start, you know, as a counselor in my small town, and then I'm going to work my way up to provincial, and then hopefully by the time I'm in my 40s, I'll be ready for you know, federal politics, when you get a guy like that, for some reason, they're also wired like they are going to save everybody from themselves. It's it's odd. I, I've met some politicians and they all seem to have that that thing like they got into it to protect mankind. I mean, uh, down in, in in other parts of the world, I think politics is is more about control and money. But I still think there's that that sort of that that initial sense that they're going to do something to save us from ourselves and and i just think they should be fixing roads and finding ways to 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 make public transit more affordable for everybody yeah they should let and us put the do homeless get out. in yeah like yeah. don't worry about the internet and and we'll it's a it tough out. one it's a tough one because if you get a little too angry about both parties wanting to do something to control how we watch porn. No one. Votes. If you're a little loud about it, it's going to look a little suspicious. Yeah. Right? Well, dude, that's the other thing, right? Like these distractions exist for a reason. So, like when I saw the Pierre Polyev came hard against people watching pornography, or like, and he and he sticks to the script, right? He's like, we do not want children watching pornography. That and, and, and that's fair. That's and understandable. You're like, but you're, you're like, not going to okay, keep okay, your okay, kids away from watching porn. It's just yeah, not going to happen. It, totally. And it's not about that. That's the other thing, right? And so. If you come out against that, but you're not specific with how you phrase it, you're like, everybody's like, wait a second. Yeah. You're a pedophile. And then you're going to get lumped into the pedophile reply bin with everybody where you're a groomer, a pedo, you want to serve again. So like when I heard this news, I was incredibly specific with how I responded to it. Yeah. You got to be careful. Like, I didn't want to come out in favor of kids watching porn. It was one of those like conversation because it's like, you exactly. got to do this you in don't the wanna... world. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, here's the thing. I think I think we need less involvement, government involvement in our lives. That that's that's the way I approach things. Well, and here's the catch. Like Pierre Polyev has been screaming about gatekeepers and freedom. You are the gatekeeper. Dude, what he's trying to do is force everybody, which is a massive invasion of privacy. There's two pieces of information I never give people. Three actually. 
I never give people my social insurance number. I never give them my driver's license. I never give them my health card. Not, none of those things. Like it, it very, very rarely will I include that information. And if it needs to be included, I always make sure that there's no way I can get around it. Because for when someone has your driver's license, they got access to everything about you. They will be able yeah. to find out everything about you from your driver's abstract to your health card to criminal tr- criminal record, like everything. They can reverse database search all this shit. Yeah. And so when the government of a dude who lies for a living about everything from terror attacks to who's responsible for your fucking rent says, we're going to protect the kids. You need to be very careful because it's not yeah. about the kids. It's not about the kids. That's a gotcha moment for him to make you go, well, I'm fighting thing. against it. And he'll call you a pedophile. And all of a sudden he gets a big lift. And the other thing is it's about surveillance. Dave Mosscrop did an incredible Substack on it. Encourage everybody to go read it. The idea that anybody just to prove a 40, 50, 30, 20, fuck, even an 18 year old, just to prove they're responsible enough to look at pornography or old enough in the eyes of the government. Come fucking on. Yeah. What yeah, are we I, doing here? I'm like, against, what are we doing? I'm against, I'm Michael against Geist, being involved in this. Dude, go. Pierre Elliott Trudeau said it best. The government has no business in the bedrooms of Canadians. Not one yes. fucking iota, not a second. The government also has no business in the homes of people. Right. Yeah. Unless those yeah. kids are getting That's harmed. Well and the government has no fucking business asking you for your driver's Why? license because what, they what shifted? have it. What shifted? Something shifted. And I don't know when, but all it, of a dude, sudden, politicians are in our houses. They're making yeah. decisions for us. It's like I'm having dinner with these people and we're having a discussion about how our kids are taught, what books to read and all that. Like, get, get stop, stop, yeah. stop, Fuck stop. Off. Fix the roads. Fix the roads. Healthcare. Get, don't, don't don't come for the internet. Don't tell me that I need to be nice or I'm going to get, get charged. Don't don't tell yeah. me that I'm racist. Don't tell me that I'm this. Don't tell me that I'm that. Don't tell me how to live. Fix health care. Give us new bridges. Fuck. Do social programs for homeless folks. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. Let yeah. the world surf the web. We're going to figure it out anyway. We're going to figure it out. And you're not going to control it. I've had because it's cable. It, it's a monster. It said it is a monster. And as soon as they block one site, there'll be another one that'll pop up. And you know what? One hundred percent. It'll be Pornhub starting another one, right? Like that's that's all it is. It's just gonna. I've had Disney Channel. I've dude. I've got every major streaming service. This I, is a I tough can watch any way. movie I want. I've got. I can watch any television show I want around the world. I don't pay for any of it. You, what do you do? You think, uh, dude? I know people that don't pay for their energy. They figured out a way to get free energy because, it's like, the I know, pe- dude. The government, all they want to do is get in your shit. They want to fucking get in your shit, change your mind, change your vote, separate you from money, yeah. separate you from reality. That's all this is. So don't fucking buy it. Like, there isn't a Canadian on this planet that should be taking either of those sides. Yeah. Oh yeah, we would love to be monitored online. That'd be great. No, no, fuck. There are there are criminal fucking codes that allow the government to monitor people if they have reasons and specific reasons to question them. Plus, right? we're being Whether monitored be by everybody be... already, right? Totally. Yeah. Dude, we're monitored all the time. Yeah. And and for a fucking guy like Pierre Polyev, the last bit, little bit I'll say about Pierre Polyev, for the dude <laughs> to be swinging for the fences for the past year, talking about how Justin Trudeau is going to institute a digital ID for everybody, and you should say no to Justin Trudeau's digital ID, which is not happening. He wants to digitally ID every single Canadian. He said it this morning when he asked, told everybody, you're not going to be able to surf the web without giving him your fucking driver's license. Like, the hypocrisy is awesome. Yeah, too. yeah. Anyway. And and pointing it out is just, it's it's almost pointless. You know what? I remember a time... It was so much easier in the eighties because porn, mm-hmm. we found it in the woods, right? Yeah. yeah. And I would cancel my entire weekend. If somebody said that there was some <laughs> dirty magazines just in the back. Do you, do you 40, remember, do you remember when we were side kids? Of the tracks? There was, yeah. You used to find like porno magazines in the woods, like uh, next to like That's a couple of I empty, like empty King cans. Remember that a couple empty cans of like, Molson Canadian. Oh, you're like Club Magazine. Remember Club Magazine? Yeah. Remember that one? No, I don't remember. When Club. I was a kid. Yeah. You know how they prevented kids from looking at pornography when we were kids? They wrapped those dirty magazines in cellophane 
or like, you know, plastic covers. And they put them at the back of the magazine rack. And so you could only see the head of a woman who you knew was naked, right? Do you know what the shop owners did when I would reach up and grab one of those dirty magazines and start leafing through it so I could see boobs? You know what they did? Nothing. <laughs> Not one of them was like, you're too young to look at that. I was like a 12 year old boy. I just want to see boobs. Of course, I want to see boobs. I'm going to take that off. Thing. I'm going to have a look. Oh, look, boobs. That's great. Boobs. I love boobs. 14. I'm a 12 year old boy. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to figure out a way to watch it. You know how much smarter young people are than we were as young people today? You know how much more industrious they are? That's the point that's just ridiculous. That's why this is so performative. They're going to block it, and some, everyone's going to find a way around it. Right. Yeah. Like it just, it's so well, ridiculous. I know I will. <laughs> I know I'll find my way around it. I've got no problem finding my way around. Hey, can that. I, can I, can I shift gears quickly? I want to ask you Please. a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to watch the walking dead this weekend? Not on your radar, eh? Is that this weekend? Yeah. Rick and Michonne. Premier of a, what? They're back. What? what really the Vegas is back rick rick he's back he's back is that this weekend starts on sunday have i been busy have i should i be paying attention to this i don't know i just I, I be paying attention to the watch did you watch I, I didn't did, finish. did you i didn't finish the series i didn't i was like the second last season and i'm like i ran out of steam i'm like the zombies just keep coming back <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm gonna, it was the same I thing. I was committed. Like you get into a tight spot. It was always the same formula for The Walking Dead, and then I couldn't watch the last season and a half. I had no idea they were coming out with a new season. Is it called The Walking Dead? Is it just um, a new season? Is uh, it a new there's a name for it. I, I'm sorry. The Reckoning or something? I, I, I don't know what it starts on Sunday. And um, yeah, I'll be in. You know, you have the internet I'll, right in front I'll of be you. watching. It's a new frontier. So... I what you should do is you should Walking Dead a new frontier. You should go back and watch the last no. season. Never mind. You should binge the the last season. You need to see the last episode at the very least. Yeah, actually, you know what? If you miss the last season, last season and a half, you could watch the last episode. I might do that actually on Sunday. Watch, watch the last episode. The last episode of the original Walking Dead. I never got into the uh, the fears and the other ones. I Hold it. I even tried Hold to it. watch the Daryl one in Paris, and I didn't make it through that. Hold it. But I'll watch Rick and Walking Michonne. Dead. Hold it. Walking Dead. The ones who live. That's that makes more series. sense. I the New Frontiers was bugging me. I didn't know why, but I didn't want to question. That's the you. video game. That's the new video game. Yeah. New Frontiers. Find out. Yeah. When to stream and more details on the upcoming series following the continued adventures of Rick Grimes and Michonne. Hmm. I had no back. idea. Thank you for telling me. I don't know if I'll watch it. I might watch it this week. I will. I might watch it. Yeah. I'll give it a try. It, you could easily skip the uh, last. Have you seen Einstein of the Bomb? I did start watching that because we watched Oppenheimer. On the weekend, my, my wife and I and, and yeah. the daughter and uh, the son-in-law, we watched it. And, um, and I kind of got a little bit of a bug for that, for that content. So I, I, I have been sort of making my way through the Einstein one. I'm a little triggered by the actor. He's not very good. The guy that plays Einstein. Yeah. The guy that looks like a Botox version of Einstein. Well, and the wig's bad. It's just, it's not. Yeah. 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 Nah, dude, it's a recreation, but it's just, that, this is what I love about the Einstein um, documentary on Netflix, which you have to watch all his own words. Nothing was made up. Nothing was regenerated. Nothing was predisposed. They just they took everything that he wrote, and they chronologically put it together from when he was when he discovered atoms. Like the dude was the guy that discovered atoms and how to separate atoms, right? So well, and Oppenheimer just, leaned and on his he, research. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. So he discovered all the shit, and then all of a sudden, Nazi Germany is a thing. And in 1933, he's like, "This place is fucked. They're coming for me." People are like lighting his shit on fire at home. He's like, and he wasn't even Jewish. He was from a Jewish family, was not a practicing Jew, none of those things. So the reason why you need to watch it is because the rhetoric of the time is exactly what we're hearing today. You know, the rise of a certain hate-filled group, the rise of a certain ideology, the rise of people and authoritarian talking points. There is well, an interesting parallel between well, what it, they the were academia, going through in the 
thirties, right? Yeah, dude. Like is the, the destruction of experts in fields, right? That's why he left. So he identifies mass E equals MC squared does the math shows people. You can separate atoms. shows people how the theory of relativity works. Hitler comes to power in 33. Hitler's guy goes to his university and he's like, everything Einstein said is stupid because he's Jewish. Doesn't make any sense. It's all a conspiracy theory. Fuck you. Fuck this place. Literally. The interesting so, thing about that, Dean, is that his hatred for the Jewish um, culture, right, may have been the reason why he didn't pursue the um, the, the the technology behind the bomb. I don't know. I don't know. You um, have Hitler, to watch the doc. Though. Hitler. Hitler ignored it, and and uh, and then ended up jumping into that into that arms race mm -hmm. too late. And by the time, by the time, oh, no, they tried. They tried to take his. They work did and try, but, a bomb, and they failed. And then Einstein went to the states, and Oppenheimer's like, "Hey, have you got some tricks, some tips." But his like, hatred yeah. for the culture yeah. was part of the reason why he ended up being so behind the, uh, you know, behind the times with respect to the development of 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 uh, of the atom bomb, the nuclear technology. Yeah, had he right? actually liked Jewish people, he might have gotten the bomb first because they were the people that invented it. Right. They were the ones that were sort of ahead of the curve, right? With the new physics and and, yeah. and whatnot. At the time, they called it new physics, right? The new physics. Yeah, you're right. You're 100 percent right. You did just watch Oppenheimer. Yeah, I want it was to go very to good. Germany to dis to study the new physics. Yeah, that's what Oppenheimer said. Anyway, thanks. For he coming. had um, Heisenberg. Uh, he was leaning on Hitler. Was leaning on a German scientist at the time that um. I can't remember his name. He was no good. Matter. He was no good. He couldn't figure it out. Didn't get her. Didn't get that. That's a good movie too. If haven't people haven't watched that, Oppenheimer, yep. phenomenal, phenomenal, yep. phenomenal. Watch. You know what I would encourage you to do? I'd encourage you to watch Einstein and then Oppenheimer. A little life hack, because then you can go. Yeah. Oh, that's why Einstein was in Oppenheimer. Because it's, it's a interesting weird. you bring up the the parallels between the times and what they were going through and the struggles that they were having right. with. Um, with um with political and and societal sort of pressures right because that that jumped out at me um from watching that movie it was like and we're kind of there's some things we're dealing with right now that are that are kind of interesting right that are very that totally, are totally dude that are totally. very comparable I, to what they were going through in the uh, in the in the 30s and the early 40s right you know and i'm reminded Culturally. by it sometimes when i watch like historical or takes on historical figures specifically around world war ii and i'm a big history buff like i love getting into the history i get a big boner when i do historical like i'm watching troy right now on netflix it's a great little episode great little series when you or you're literally learning about helen of troy alexander learning about uh, the Greek army, the Trojan War, the Trojan horse, how they got in, like everything. The history of it's fucking phenomenal. And there's it's on a Netflix? ton of nudity in it too. Yeah, yeah. It's great booby shots in there. Uh, so you would like it. However, historically, it's incredible because you you go, oh, we keep repeating the same mistakes, right? And when you watch it's Einstein so or you watch Oppenheimer, you can literally play out in a much more barbaric time, a less connected time. You can literally play out Brown today's brown shirts, digital brown shirts, authoritarian talking points, hatred of specifically marginalized groups, hatred of certain races. Like you're seeing the propagation of it today. You're seeing it grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And then you listen to Einstein's words where he's like, I've watched this long enough that I'm uncomfortable living here as someone of Jewish descent. And how he detailed the start the beginning and the end when he decided he needed to leave and how he was telling his friends, you cannot yeah, no. vote for Hitler. Like he was hardcore. He was one of those academics in the twenties and the thirties who was a hardcore anti-racist anti, like he was, he was a hardcore pacifist. Yeah. Einstein was a militant pacifist struggled with the idea that you had to create an atomic bomb to fight the guys that are trying to create an atomic. They bomb. all did. It might not have been created if it wasn't for Hitler. Totally. I mean, it was the race to do that. They had already defeated Hitler, but they needed to go and take out Japan. And then, boom, they make this thing and everybody still complains he killed too many people. But what Hitler, what Hitler, what Einstein said in this documentary rings true to me today, which is interesting. He's like, the only thing you can fight that force with is more force.
in that arena. You have to beat it with force, equal or more force. That's which is why he had to create the atomic bomb because he knew that that's exactly what Germany was going to do. And then he gave an interview to a Japanese reporter a few years after that. And he basically said the same thing. This is the one mistake I've made in my life. And I had to make this mistake for the betterment of humanity. And I struggle with it all the time. Um, we're in that same boat. It's not an atomic bomb. It's going to be something else. It's going to be internet related. It'll be natural resource related. It'll be something. But folks, like, <laughs> you know, telling someone they're going to give you the, I need your ID for you to look at the internet. The disinformation That's the slippery well slope. The disinformation, also- authoritarian talking points, hatred of marginalized groups. Man, oh, man. The us uh, versus them. The, the us sir. versus them. Uh, yep. Like, there's a lot of that going on right now. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, something it's to funny. Take with you. It's funny. I, 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 I've seen a couple of clips of um, uh, talking about where we're at with our relationship with Russia because I, I'm, I got to be honest with you. I am just, I am flabbergasted with like that. And we don't need to get into it, but the Tucker Carlson stuff and the, that Canadian family with all those kids moving to it. Like, it's just, it is insane. Oh, they found them, by the way. They found the family. They did, yeah. It's up yeah. on the Crier Media on the webpage if you want to go see get some information about that. I know you just blogged about it recently. But I'm I'm sort of struggling right now with trying to figure that out um, in, in my own mind. And um, and so I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not a history buff or anything like that, but it's interesting when you start to look at people that are and people who have dedicated their lives to learning about um, what's happened in the past and the connections they make to the future and what we're dealing with now. And you can, you can set your clock to how history repeats itself today. It's crazy. Some of our, our most famous historians have predicted a lot of the things that we're going through right now. And it was years ago. I, I I saw a clip of Nixon talking about how our relationship with Russia and 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 the Communist Party would morph into this battle, not so much about ideologies about how to govern a country, but about ideologies on a social level between and he didn't say woke versus unwoke, but he actually said it out loud. This was in when he was in office. Fifty in the years 70s, ago. Yeah. In the seventies. Yeah. He made a prediction about our relationship with Russia from the Western civilization point of view mm-hmm. and and was warning people about what we're going through right now, where you're going to have members of your own society thinking that what's happening in that country it's makes good. more sense than what they're dealing with in a democracy. And fucking wild, isn't it? And that's just be- that's based on a very smart man. Say whatever you will about Richard Nixon, right? I mean, we all know the stories. Watergate, blah, 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 blah. Dude, Carl Sagan, you know? one of the greatest physicists in the history of our time, says the, said the same thing. Fucking in the sixties, the seventies, the eighties, and the nineties. Yeah. Every majorary, every economist, every psychological evolutionary psychologist, every single person. And all you have to do is read, dude. Read. You can go back 2,000 years. You know I like to study philosophy, specifically ancient Roman Greek philosophy. You know I'm a practicing Stoic, right? Back in the day, Marcus yeah. Aurelius went through a plague. He sent it to the, the, the throne as the emperor after Antoninus. He becomes the emperor of Rome, the last of the four or five good emperors. And what did he deal with? Had a pandemic. <laughs> like, yeah. And then he deals with misinformation, people running around saying, this is Marcus Aurelius. And the Romans trying to destroy your lives. Don't wear anything on your face. This is 2,000 years ago. It's the same shit uh-huh. all the time. And they, they would introduce gods and idols into the whole thing, right? They would introduce eternal salvation and culture and Epicureanism and different cultures. This I, It's all identity politics. It's been happening for thousands of years, dude. It also years. People I mean, also yeah. need an answer. They, yeah. they need something to hang their hats on, right? They they good. need something to explain why the good things are happening to them, and they need something to explain why the bad things are happening to them. And and sometimes we pick the wrong things. Speaking of picking the wrong things, the last thing I'll leave you with, the gentleman we're talking about who moved his entire family of 10 to Russia, went missing after Russia stole all his money, and his wife beaked off on YouTube, and they all their videos got taken down. He's, he's YouTubing again. He's put out those. Guess who's not in any of them? His loudmouth wife, who's like, I hate this shithole. Let's go home. 
She was saying in video. She hasn't been in one video since. His name's Arn Veenstra. Veenstra. A R E N D F E N S T R A. He put out an 18 minute video, which you can see, by the way. An 18 minute so video. Rambly, hard to watch. It, of it, everything we said is wrong, totally misunderstood. It's our problem. We should have learned the language. Rush is great. Rush is great. Rush is great. I'm going to play just a little clip from it. This is really, really, really awesome to watch. And when I say it's really awesome to watch, it's fucking terrible. When we say things in the moment, they kind of take it for what it is. They get the odd person still. But here we have a massive language difference, and we're learning that. We've learned that from day one when we came here. And we knew that. We knew that. Okay, So it's not... It's not a surprise to us coming to this country that you guys speak Russian. Obviously, you speak Russian. And we came here not to be Canadians in Russia. We, we Honestly, we want to integrate and be Russians. And we still want that very much. Um, but it became apparent today. We, we took this last video down that we put up. Um, we thought we explained ourselves very clearly. And we thought that the message we were bringing over was very clear. But as I'm answering comments all day today, trying to answer comments, it became more and more clear that we're misunderstood and that the wrong messages come across and, and it's not what we wanted at all. He's scared. Someone, someone scared him. Dude. <coughs> oh, fuck. That guy. I'll tell you what yeah. happened there. I'll tell you what happened. He and the wife put out a video. Russian government invites him over, says they're going to give him land. They put him up in a two-bedroom apartment. Family of 10, actually nine, because you people are fucked from staying in Ontario. That's where their family's from. Oh, uh, thank market. God. Yeah, so the oldest is like, uh, yeah, I'm not doing it. Entire family, by the way, I've talked to people that know them. Entire family was like, don't do it, dude. Don't do it. And they're like, we're feeling, we feel the call of the Lord. So they, boom, they go over there. Sell everything, sell their farm <sighs> with millions of dollars. They go over with millions of Canadian dollars, which is billions in rubles. What is the first thing that happened? Sorry, you can't have access to your bank account. Suspicious activity. They have not been able to buy groceries. They do not have a place to live. They went missing for a while. And his wife has not been in any of the videos since they actually had to take all the other videos down. They were forced to take the other videos down. Now the family back here is like, uh, that's weird. That is not the people that we sent over there. They're like, and they can clearly tell he's scared. And at the end of the video, I'll play this for you because it's, it's, it's telling is what it is at the end of the video to, to see this dude uh basically go oh i hope that was good enough it, it's unbelievable yeah <laughs> did you hear that no i didn't no it okay played the, yeah 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 no it did play sorry i need to put this back up my bad um let me put this back up but you have to hear the end of this guy so this, this guy is like an international story now, Arn Feenstra. He has no idea. Says he's considering doing interviews. But listen to what he says as he finishes off this 18-minute, which, by the way, he apologized to Russia for his own mistake of them stealing his money. I counted 74 times. 74 yeah, times. It was, and it look was at his hard face. to watch. No wife, no nobody. Kids aren't in the video. They've usually been in all of them. And look at the title. We are sorry and we will do better. That is a dude that knows that he made the wrong decision and his wife and life and family are in jeopardy. Anywho, end of his video as he signs off. Yeah. Did you hear that? No, I didn't, but um, I sometimes the video doesn't uh, come back through to me. Oh, let me do it again. I'll just I'll just okay. back it up. Maybe I didn't play it loud enough for people. Maybe it did. Maybe that maybe that's my problem. Uh, sounds like it is. Is it's up now? Let me play this for you one more time. Yeah, yeah I see him okay. now. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Let me play this for you. Here, they're listen. not alone. 
and uh, that they do have choices. They have uh, excellent choices available to them. All right, hopefully that's clear. Maybe, I don't know, I try my best. <laughs>They got to come home. They got to get that family out of there. I listen, I, I, I know how you feel. And, um, I just, it, there's kids involved. I just, I am so sick to my stomach over this whole thing. Like it's, so, you know, what Putin announced today, he announced a new program for Christians, Orthodox Christians like Arndt and his wife. So they're going to pay for people to come from United States, America, Canada, and other Western industrialized countries to get away from the secular lie. So this is a pilot program to move people over here and to get them propaganda, send it back home and get other people to make Russia look like everybody's moving to Russia. And then they'll steal yeah, the money. And, and meanwhile, meanwhile, there's, yeah, well, we don't need to speculate, but that, that, that video was clearly under duress. Like oh, anybody shit. with any, any, any sense of, of, uh, uh, yeah, it, that, that's, I, that's my thought when I watched it, that was so clearly, the, the, the tension, you can just see it in his eyes. That's Hopefully that's sorry, clear. sack of hammers. Maybe. I don't know. I'm trying my best. <laughs> God. They got to get him out of there. They, yeah. Uh, those kids don't deserve that. No, they don't. Anyway. <sighs> great show. All today. right, brother. We got in some fun stuff off the start. We got into some radio stuff. We made fun of vegans. Had a couple of great laughs today. Talked about the seriousness of life. Talked about porno. I think the word bukkake may have made an appearance. I learned a lot today. Thanks for doing this. From Cross, and again, thanks FM. to this yeah. podcast, I realized that bukkake is not something you order at Starbucks. Two pumps. Vanilla. All right. Thanks, buddy. Good to see you. Lachlan Cross, 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton is where you can find him. Online every day, does the morning show, host of the locker room. How about Arn Feenstra? <laughs> okay. I hope that was good enough. Anyway, thanks a lot. Appreciate you being here. Uh, you can find him on Twitter too, at Lachlan Cross. And I want to thank some people for making this possible, specifically our partners at factcheck.io. Do you believe these people are working on the most robust fact-checking software you've ever seen for news, social media, videos, pictures? The Shazam of fact-checking is coming and not a moment too soon as the world likes to take advantage of your intellectual prowess by telling you lies and then getting you angry and forcing you to do dumb stuff. Uh, let's take a peep opinions and people out of the mix and let's give all of that agency to software that works where you can see the full epistemology, the full background, the total value of what you're reading, where it's from, who put it out, and whether or not it's true or not. doesn't matter what it is. If it has a URL, if it's a post, if it's a picture, it's a video, factcheck.io. We'll find out if you should believe it or not. Do you believe? Go to factcheck.io today. Check it out. Answer a couple of questions. Join their beta testing team. You can do that as of right now. Factcheck.io, F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K, dot I-O. Do you believe? Because if you do, they've got a beta test for you. Take agency back. When it comes to information you consume, go to factcheck.io and sign up for their beta test. Today, as always, brought to you by our friends at Cantorque, makers of rugged, hardworking torque wrenches. Reliability you can trust. Cantorque is the top-of-the-line torque tension tool maker. Flange maintenance systems. They do impact sockets. Doesn't matter what it is. If it's an industrial torque tool, they will give you the best in sales, service, calibration, fabrication, and maintenance of that tool. All your solutions under one roof. Tool rentals, calibration services, repairs to custom fabrication. Geez, they'll even let you distribute their products. They have opportunities to work for them now in Canada and around the world. So if you understand this industry, if you are in the heavy machinery industry, if you're looking for a torque wrench, looking for a job in this industry, Cantorque offers a complete range of services, products, making them your one-stop destination for all your bolting needs, saving you time, effort, and hassle. Go to Cantorque.com today, brand new website, great new podcast. You can check them out at Cantorque.com. Colin is the principal. He's a good dude, likes to race cars and build cool torque wrenches. And he's Canadian-made, manufactured, and owned. Very proud of that fact. He does business around the world. Go to cantorque.com today. Brought to you as well by Gitch, engineered for any level of performance as well as everyday life. Gitch is luxury-branded boxer briefs, underwear designed with your movement in mind. And right now, you can only get them at edsfineimports.com. 
Go to edgefineimports.com. Use promo code GITCH3 at checkout. You will find yourself the owner of a free pair of underwear when you buy three or more. Not just any underwear either. Gitch, the most premium boxer brief on the planet. Made in Canada for Canadians and 15% off your entire order. When you actually give them your email address, go to edsfineimports.com. Check out their massive clothing store. Pick up a pair of Gitch. Use promo code Gitch3 at checkout. And he'll mint you with a pair of the best underwear on the planet. Gitch, engineered for any level of performance. Gitch3 is your promo code at edsfineimports.com. And, of course, brought to you by Muse Massage Spa. Muse Massage Spa is Canada's number one body rub parlor. They are in Toronto, and they need local Toronto traffic. These guys are advocates, sexologists, educators, and they're also really, really smart entrepreneurs that own the best body house in the city of Toronto. Go to musemassagespod.com. Check them out today. Go to 1290 Finch Avenue West if you'd like to pay them a visit, Unit 13 in Toronto. And make sure you download their podcast, subscribe to their podcast, Patreon, Muse on the Mic, as well as Muse on the Mic anywhere you get your fine podcasts. You can also go to their website. Get everything you need there. MuseMassageSpa.com, including choosing your moves, picking treatments. Check out the spa. You can see their location. You can even become a muse if you're looking for a job. Advocates, entrepreneurs, very funny. Their podcast is incredible. It's called Muse on the Mic. Again, don't forget to sub to the Patreon. MuseOnTheMic.com is where you can find them. And MuseMassageSpa.com. Have a great day, everybody. <clears throat> Appreciate you being here. See you tomorrow. Emily from Muse will join us talk about porn and the industry and sex work and other stuff. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Uh